Hi, and welcome to the Topaz CMS webinar demonstrating how intuitive and scalable our enterprise platform can be for your business. I'm Chris Damas, CEO of Topaz Digital, and I appreciate you taking the time today to look a little bit deeper into what the Topaz platform can do for your business. Shortly, Craig will take you through all the different sections that the software has to offer and take you into examples of how it could be applicable for your business type. The most important thing to mention at the outset is that the Topaz CMS platform is an enterprise grade fully scalable solution which is fully inclusive with all purchases of RSL series displays. So I'll pass over to Craig now to take you into the different sections and of course if you want a more personalized tour you can always select the request a webinar button on the website. Thank you. Thanks Chris. The Topaz CMS website has everything you need to get started, including frequently asked questions, user manuals, support information and the login page. Upon registering your SL screen you will be given a unique username and password to log into your account. Once logged in you will see the user dashboard which gives you an at a glance overview of the current status of all screens and media assets in your account. In this demo we have two screens in the account and you can see that the total screens online is at 50% meaning that we have one screen playing fine and one offline. By clicking on the offline screen you can immediately see more information on the screens with the offline status. We will cover screen statuses in more detail later in the webinar. One of the most important features of the CMS is the organization tree. This is where you can organize your network in whichever way you require. Each branch of the organizational tree can be named whatever you like and have as many levels as you wish. So your organization can be very simple, such as a single level for a store, or complex, such as being split into countries, cities, sites, reception area, etc. You can then assign screens to any level that you wish. You can then create user accounts with specified access rights so that different staff can log into different levels of the organization. In this example, if reception logged into an account named reception, they are only able to see the screen assigned to the reception level of the organization and are only able to edit the RSS feed. This means that you can have as many users as you require, all with varying levels of access to different parts of your organization, allowing complete flexibility in how you run your signage network. The media section of the CMS is where you upload and manage the media assets that you wish to display on screen. The media assets available in this section are images, videos and RSS feeds. The recommended file format for images is JPEG with a maximum resolution of 1920 by 1080 for landscape screens and 1080 by 1920 for portrait screens and they can be uploaded by browsing to the correct folder on your computer and pressing OK. Once uploaded, the image appears in the image library and from here you can check its details such as file name, size, resolution, when it was uploaded, who it was uploaded by, etc. Videos can be uploaded in exactly the same way as images, but by double clicking on a video in the video library you can watch a low resolution version of it to ensure it is uploaded correctly. All the same information such as file size, file resolution etc are still available on the right hand side of the screen. Recommended file formats for videos are MPEG4, AVI and MOVs. Links to external XML RSS feeds can also be created in the media section. For example, if you wanted to display the top stories from CNN, you would simply need to copy the URL from the CNN website, create a new RSS item, paste the URL into the address section and choose how much of it you wish to show on screen.
Groups is the last section to cover within media. This feature allows you to organize your media into specified groups and use this group to search for the particular media that you want to find. For example, if you create a media group called Drinks and add all drinks related media to it, you can then use this group as search criteria to filter out all non-drinks related items in your library. Once you have uploaded the content that you wish to show on screen, you then need to decide how you want to display it. This is done via templates in the program section and there are already two default system templates created. These allow you to display images and videos in full screen horizontal or vertical orientation. If however you wish to split your screen up into zones and have different types of content displaying in different areas of the screen, you will need to create a custom user template. Here you will see a blank black canvas in the center of the screen and a selection of widgets on the left. These widgets include background, which allow you to have a branded background on your screen. Video, which allows you to add images and video to a zone. Image, which allows extra image zones. Text, which enables you to add custom scrolling messages or the external RSS feeds you linked to earlier in media. Logo, which allows a PNG logo to be ever present on top of your other content. Date, time and weather zones. And finally, static text, which can be utilized for things such as digital menu boards. When you click on the widget, it appears on the canvas. You can then left click to drag and reposition it and stretch it to the required size. Specific coordinate parameters are also available on the right of the screen. Once you have used templates to design how you want your content to be displayed, you then need to decide what content is to be played within it. This is done with a playlist. The quickest way to create a playlist is to use one of the two default system templates, as these only have one zone to populate. In this example, you can see that we have used the vertical template and by simply clicking on an item from the media library and dragging it onto the template on the right or the content zone at the bottom, you begin to build a playlist very quickly. Alternatively, you can create a new playlist and use one of your custom user templates such as the one we created earlier. As you can see, the custom template appears on the right, but as we have more zones to populate, we have more content tabs at the bottom of the screen. By clicking on each tab, we highlight the specific zone, which then allows us to drag and drop the required content into it. The text tab in this playlist allows us to type in our own custom messaging that will display on screen or alternatively, you can add in the link we created earlier to an external RSS feed, in this case, CNN News. To ensure that this is looking how you want it to look, by clicking on Quick Preview, you are able to see a low resolution preview of your playlist. You have now designed how you want your content to display and what content is to play within it. Now you need to send this to the screen. This is done with Publish. When you first go to the Publish screen, you will see all previous publishes that have been made under your account. To perform a new publish, click New and you will see that the screen is split into five sections. Organization, Player, Playlist, Publish Attribute and Targeted Player. In this example, we will perform a basic default schedule publish, which is the quickest way to send content to your screens. To do this, you need to simply click the screen that you wish to publish to, and it will appear in the targeted player section. Then by clicking add in the playlist section, you will see your available playlists. 
Select the one you want, then simply click OK and the content will be sent to your screen. Within Publish, you also have the ability to set schedules to have playlists only play at certain times of the day or certain days of the week. For example, if you wanted to set a playlist to only play between 8am and 2pm, this can be done very easily. If you wish to send playlists to multiple screens at once, you can do this by selecting each screen in the player one at a time, or for speed you can select levels in the organisation tree to choose all screens on that level. Managing and monitoring your screens is an important part of organising your network. Within the player section you can see all the players assigned to your account and by clicking on a player you can edit its basic information such as player name, its location and the level of your organisation that it is assigned to. Setting on off timers for a screen is a very useful function that allows you to set the screens to turn on and off at certain times of the day, meaning that staff on site do not have to be concerned with doing this manually themselves. If a customer is concerned with the screens taking up bandwidth on site, you also have the ability to set designated download periods. In this example, the screen is being set to only download new content at a time of day with low bandwidth usage. The screen status section is important for monitoring your network. By clicking on this, you can immediately see important information of all your screens. Here you can see that we have one player online and playing and one player offline for over 24 hours, so some troubleshooting is needed. In most cases, the player will have just lost internet connection, but by checking this section you have information such as player name, serial number, organisation, IP address and the last time it was online to help you identify. By right clicking a player you also have the player control functions that allow you to remotely stop, play, reboot, put to sleep and wake up your player. The last thing to cover in the CMS is the logs and accountability. This is where you can get reports of all user operations made in your network. As you can see in this example, everything that has been covered in this webinar has been recorded, including logging in and out, adding media, creating playlists, publishing and much more. This allows you to monitor exactly who has done what on your system and you can even export the logs as an Excel spreadsheet. You can also monitor all player activity within logs. This allows you to ensure that the content you have sent to the player has been downloaded correctly. This can also be exported as an Excel spreadsheet. Thank you for watching this Topaz CMS overview. If you would like a more personalised tour, please select the request a webinar button on www.topazdigital.com.